Oh my god, Kingdom Hearts 2.8 is just another cash grab, right? Wrong. Hey guys, HMK once again, and this is a very important video because Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue has to be the most important Kingdom Hearts game to date. Aside from 3, Kingdom Hearts 3 will always be the most important one. Now what is it exactly? Why, why is Kingdom Hearts 2.8 so important? For the people who don't know what Kingdom Hearts 2.8 is and kind of, you know, are into the Kingdom Hearts community or the Kingdom Hearts games or whatever, Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Remix is a PlayStation 4 exclusive game that is scheduled to be released in 2016, sometime this year. You know, in Japan, America, it's really up in the air, we really don't know, but we'll find out when the time comes. But anyways, Kingdom Hearts 2.8 is very much like Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 before it. 1.5 and 2.5 were compilation games of the previous Kingdom Hearts titles rendered in glorious HD. Each uh, compilation had three games, but two of them were playable and one of them were just rendered as cutscenes because it was um, either too hard to get that gameplay style rendered on the PlayStation 3 or they just were stripped for time. These two games are 358 for two days and Kingdom Hearts Recoded, games that were for the Nintendo DS. And the playable games are Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, Burp by Sleep, and Rechain of Memories. So with all those games, uh, those are the games uh, leading up to Kingdom Hearts 3, and that's what basically 1.5 and 2.5's job was. Now, in Kingdom Hearts 2.8, we have Dream Drop Distance, which was the only game left out of the whole bandwagon of HD-ified games. And that game came out for the 3DS in 2012, and now it's going to be on the PlayStation 4 in 2016, four years later. I really want to know how that's going to come out. But Dream Drop Distance, Dream Drop Distance is cool, but that's not what makes 2.8 hell of extremely important. What makes Kingdom Hearts 2.8 so important is unlike these remixes that used older games and made them new HD so we can, you know, backtrack on the story, is that it contains two brand new excursions for us to get the questions, the answers that we need going into Kingdom Hearts 3. Because I've said this many times, that going into Kingdom Hearts 3 straight from Dream Drop Distance, it, uh, there was a lot of questions, there are a lot of things, we're going in blind into Kingdom Hearts 3. Yes, I get the gist, Kingdom Hearts 3 is supposed to be Sora, Mickey, Riku, Donald, and Goofy, Kairi will still be trained with Yen Sid, supposedly, and we're supposed to be looking for the key to return hearts, which we still have no idea what it is, and the seven Guardians of Light in order to complete the Guardians of Light to face off against Xehanort's 13 Secrets of Darkness. But by the end of Dream Job Distance, which a lot of us, like, were assuming before the game came out that we were gonna save Terra, Aqua, and Ventus, the three missing Keyblade wielders, we didn't! And I, I'm like, okay, uh, what? We're, we're ending the game like this? I mean, the game was cool, but what? Didn't really, didn't really tell us much. Um, it just made the game, a, the game series, a lot more complicated. But in Kingdom Hearts 2.8, we have a game called Kingdom Hearts 0.2: Burp by Sleep: A Fragmentary Passage. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's basically, I would say, a revival of the concept of that was called Burp by Sleep Volume 2 that was alluded in Burp by Sleep when you completed the secret episode of Burp by Sleep Final Mix. But now we have 0.2, and 0.2 is supposed to tell the tale of Akko, who was trapped in the realm of darkness after the end of Burp by Sleep, and it's supposed to connect to uh, the journey that the, the journey that will lead to the reunification of the Seven Guardians of Light, Terra, Aqua, Ventus, uh, Sora, Riku, Kairi, and Mickey. That's who we think they are, but uh, Nomura said that it could be all these other people. We, we, we don't know, and that's why 0.2 exists, because we don't fucking know! And now 0.2 aims to answer a lot of those questions, hopefully. And not only that, we have Kingdom Hearts Key back cover included in 2.8. Kingdom Hearts Key is so far a Japan exclusive mobile game and browser game. It still hasn't released worldwide, still hasn't released in North America. That tells of times before Kingdom Hearts, before Burp by Sleep, before the Keyblade War. It tells the tale of four tellers, five of them, that were uh, overseeing unions that were gathering light in order to protect it from being destroyed by the Keyblade War, which they knew what was going to happen in what's called the Book of Prophecies. 
Now, um, from what we gather, from what hardcore Kingdom Hearts fans gather, uh, the story of Daybreak Town and Kingdom Hearts Key is it's still pretty up in the air because you play yourself as an avatar and you get um, you get some clues about what's going on, that there's a traitor, that um, you get your own uh, Kiriti which acts as a familiar to you, and it, it's just, you know, it's it, there's a lot of crypticness to Kingdom Hearts Key. But Kingdom Hearts Key back cover is supposed to tell the tale of the foretellers themselves in a full length feature length movie. Two hours. Jesus. Alright. Now like recoded in 350 over two days. All the cutscenes were long, but like, you know, not two hours long. Like ugh. and not only that, the biggest kicker is that back cover and 0.2 and if you want to count it Dream Drop Distance, because we do know that Flow Motion is returning in Kingdom Hearts 3, it's supposed to give us that big ass glimpse that we always wanted going into Kingdom Hearts 3. Alright? This is gonna be the first game, the first true Kingdom Hearts game to be on PlayStation 4, to be on Next Gen, to use the Kingdom Shader. We know that Kingdom Hearts 3 is using the Kingdom Shader, but now back cover, Kingdom Hearts Keep Back Cover and 0.2 are both gonna be using a interpretation, I would say, of the Kingdom Shader, so we already get that gist. And Tetsuya Nomura, the director of the game series, confirmed that Kingdom Hearts 0.2 is going to borrow a lot of technology and it's going to be a hybrid of Kingdom Hearts 3's battle system along with Birth by Sleep battle system. Now this game, 0.2, is going to last about, let's say, um, the amount of one world, which a lot of us have considered to be around two hours when it comes to the Kingdom Hearts series, but still, it's a big two hours of gameplay, I would say. That I would say that's not regarding cutscenes within 0.2 because we already know that not only we're we gonna get cutscenes of Aqua being in the realm of darkness, but we're also gonna get cutscenes of Yensid, Mickey, and Kairi discussing uh, Yensid, Mickey, Kairi, and Riku discussing uh, the upcoming battle against Xehanort. So all of this is heavily important to the Kingdom Hearts series. I, I consider 2.8 to be way more important than 1.5 and 2.5 ever aimed to be. There were refresher courses, but this, this is the thing that's like, yo, listen, this is what's gonna go down, expect all this shit. That's what it is. It is the final chapter prologue. Kingdom Hearts 3 is the final chapter and 2.8 is the prologue. This is hell of important. It's like reading the last book of a series, reading the prologue of the last book. That has yet to, that you know, it's not gonna come out for years. Imagine re like Harry Potter type shit. Imagine going into Deathly Hollows, reading the prologue of the Deathly Hollows before the game, before the book comes out. It's really important for those people who want to know what's going on with the series. All right, a lot of people consider 2.8 to be a cash a cash grab, but it's it's not. It's it's fucking not because I mean it would be a cash grab if it was just like more stuff we already knew about, like Dream Drop Distance. That's what 1.5 and 2.5 were. There were refresher courses, and then they're like, eh, anything other than that is gonna be a cash grab unless they give us something needy, something new. And that's what they're doing with 2.8. And I can't wait for this game. Supposedly it's coming out in Japan for 2016. We don't know when it's coming out internationally. And you know, no one's Square Enix. Uh, those release dates, like release here, release there. Japan, international. Please, God. Please. Oh my god, I can't wait for 2.8. 2.8 is extremely important on the lore type level and extremely important on a gameplay type level. Lore because we're gonna go in finding out what's the deal with Aqua in the Realm of Darkness. Riku, Kairi talking about the Keyblade War. The fucking back cover of Kingdom Hearts Key and the Foretellers. That's the story segment. And it's gonna be super important on a gameplay segment because we're gonna get that glimpse that we always wanted for Kingdom Hearts 3. That battle system, that how the graphics are gonna work, how the graphics are gonna seem. I mean, we've seen something from trailers, but now we get to experience it for the first time. So, Kingdom Hearts Key is extremely important, and I hope that got you hyped, and I hope you got informed of how important this game is. So, if you like this video, please subscribe to HMK for more Kingdom Hearts videos. There's a big one coming out this month, a huge Kingdom Hearts collaboration, and I hope you guys are getting hyped for that. So, subscribe and keep it here. While you're here, Comment on why you think Kingdom Hearts 2.8 is important or what you think about 2.8 in general. And while you're there, leave a like, share, and once again, subscribe. So until the next Kingdom Hearts video, until that big collaboration, I've been HMK, and I'll check you guys later.